Let me show you how we can enhance light rays like these using nothing more than Lightroom for the editing. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So since we are dealing with a wide tonal range from bright highlights to deep shadows, I'm going to merge an HDR first. If you're just here for the tutorial part of this video, make sure to check the chapters to quickly navigate to that point. However, to merge the HDR, I'm going to select all five images down below in the film strip, right click on one of them, go to photo merge and choose HDR. In here, I'm making sure auto align is checked and with that out of the way, let's click on merge. Once this is done, Lightroom will create in this HDR file for us and on this one we can now start with the basic adjustments. So let's expand the basic panel. Right away I want the base image to be super vibrant, so I'm changing the profile to Adobe Landscape which will help with the base saturation. Then I want to brighten up the scene, I'm going to raise the exposure for that. So something like this, I don't want to overdo it, I just want to bring out a little more details from the darkest areas. For the same reason, I'm going to bring up the shadows and I'm going to bring up the blacks very gently. Okay, I think the dark areas do look nice. The brighter areas are kind of a bit too much at this point. I'm going to drop the highlights. This will give us more details back from the very brightest parts of the image, which is really, really important. And to get back a bit of contrast, I'm going to push the whites up. Okay, nice. Exposure wise, the image looks fine. Now it's time to work on the white balance. Here, it for this image, it really depends on what you want to achieve. This right here is looking nicely natural, but as usual for my images, I'm not aiming to keep everything natural. I want to have a very warm feeling to it, so I'm going to bring up the temperature a bit, introducing more warmer tones to this scene. So something like this looks really good to me. Then I'm going to bring up the vibrance to push the colors a little more and I'm even going to bring up the saturation a bit to make it really, really colorful like this. Beautiful. Of course, we can also introduce a little bit of texture to give this image a bit more sharpness and at the same time, what works really well with light rays like these is to add some glow effect on top. Therefore, as usual, I'm going to use negative clarity and dehaze. So bring down the clarity which will make everything softer and negative dehaze just will add some hazy atmosphere to this image, which works really, really nice as you can see. So that is the image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before. You can see we have a lot more details in, especially in the darker areas, but also the whole image feels a lot warmer and, in, and that in turn makes it a lot better in my opinion. Now, one thing I noticed is due to these adjustments, the light rays are kind of getting a little less visible and I want to change that. Of course, we need to do that locally through masks. So let's open up the masking panel and targeting those light rays can be tricky. But one thing these have in common, they do have some kind of hard straight line edge, which we can use to our advantage. So let's say I want to target the big light ray on the left side. I'm starting with a linear gradient and I'm placing it in a way that the edge with, of this linear gradient is overlapping with the edge of this light ray, as you can see. Now, of course, we need to further modify it in order to only really affect the light ray. I'm going to subtract another linear gradient and I'm just taking out a bit from the top left like this. Let's see. I want to target the light ray like this. Now, thanks to the overlay, you can already see we did get the shape of this light ray quite well, but we are also still selecting a little bit too much. So for the final step, I'm going to subtract one more linear gradient and I'm taking out the bottom part. I'm making it a really nice and soft edge like this so the border here won't be that visible. Now with that out of the way we can start making the light in here stronger. And first what we can do of course we can bring up the exposure since this light should be brighter. So let me raise it a little bit. Of course we don't want to overdo it. We don't want to introduce any clipping in the very brightest areas but a little bit of extra exposure really helps bringing out those light rays. I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. Again, this will just make the haziness in this area stronger. So I can push it down a lot as you can see, 
Keep in mind, we will lose a bit of detail in here if we do that. At this point, you might see some subtle blue color cast in that line. And this makes it look a little more natural, of course, but as I said earlier, I'm not really aiming to keep it natural. What I want to do is to bring up the temperature, giving this light ray some more warmth. Not a lot, just a little bit like this to create some more golden light, which I think looks really, really good. And finally, if you want to have back a bit of texture, you could play around with the clarity slider. So I can push the clarity up a bit, which will introduce some more structure. Another thing we can do is to play with the contrast if you really want to push it. But I think that is looking really, really good. Now that was it for the bigger light ray. Let's target a smaller one on the right side. Again, I'm starting with a linear gradient and I'm trying to align it with the edge of the light like this. Then let's subtract a linear gradient for the other side. I have to reposition it a little bit, but I think that's fine. Then I'm going to subtract a linear gradient for the bottom part, which needs to be a lot softer. And of course we need to subtract a linear gradient coming down from the top because this part right here is in the shadows. There is no light ray. So we have to remove that part. But other than that, that's looking like a proper selection. Again, I'm starting by increasing the exposure. And for this small light ray, it really helps pushing it like that. As you can see, what we can do as well, instead of dropping the dehaze, is we could also bring up the blacks which will give us slightly different results. So you just need to play around with these sliders. But you can see how this will nicely push those lights in, this dar in these darker areas right here. Again, let me turn off this specific mask so we can see the difference from before. You can see now it's rather invisible to after. Much better. Now let me target one more of these. I'm going to start with yet another linear gradient. I want to target this right here in the background, slightly rotating this linear gradient. Sometimes this can be a little bit tricky as you can see. Then let's align it with the light and subtract another linear gradient, taking out the whole left side like this. Okay, that should work nicely. Again, I'm going to subtract a linear gradient for the bottom part like that maybe. And I'm going to subtract a linear gradient for the top part. Again, let's raise the exposure to add more light. And let's slightly bring up the blacks as well. Perfect. And that's basically how we can target light arrays and enhance them in Lightroom with just a bunch of masks. Now we're not completely done with the masking yet. I, would, I still want to do a few things here. Let me create a radial gradient. I'm going to cover this bright spot at the top, which I want to make appear to be more glowing and therefore I'm going to raise the blacks and I'm also going to bring up the exposure to make it a little brighter introducing some more of a bright spot up in here perfect now I also want to target the road leading through the image therefore let's create a new mask choose select landscape and in here we want to choose the artificial ground which will nicely target everything we need in here so let's click on create mask and I'm going to bring up the clarity giving this road a little bit more structure. At the same time I'm going to bring down the saturation because it's looking a little bit too cold for my taste. I want to tone down the blue tones here. So that's looking perfect and with that we are done with the masking adjustments. So let me turn off all these masks to see the difference from before to after much better especially with the enhanced light now let's do the color grading so let's head out of the masking panel open up the color mixer i want to go into the hue tab first because i want to change those autumn colors a little more i'm going to bring down the orange hue giving those orange tones more of a red color and at the same time i'm going to bring down the yellow hue giving the yellow tones more of an orange color that's just something I do because I think it looks better this way. Then in the saturation tab, I want to push the autumn tones. So I'm going to bring up orange and I'm going to bring up yellow. Then I'm going to bring down the green tones because those can get overwhelming quite fast in a forest scene like this. I really don't want to have that. So that's the reason for me to bring down the green saturation. 
and I'm also going to bring down the blue saturation just for the road in the foreground. All right, we can also take a look at the luminance tab. I feel like we could bring down the orange luminance, which will make those brighter leaves, leaves at the top just a little darker, kind of fixing any overexposed parts this way. And I'm also going to bring down the yellow luminance for the same reason. All right, that's looking nice. We could play around with the green luminance, bringing it up slightly just to add back some contrast. But I think that's looking nice. Okay, another thing we can do to enhance autumn colors, some split toning in the color grading panel. For this image, I want to specifically only target the mid-tones. And in here, I'm going to apply a warm color tone to fit the autumn foliage. And I'm going to very gently push up the saturation so this effect will become visible like this. Perfect. Finally, let me head down into the calibration panel. And as always for my images, I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue a little bit and I'm going to bring up the saturation because I really like what this does to an image. Perfect. And then finally, of course, we need to sharpen this image in the details panel. I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details all the way up, then Hold down the ALT key while adjusting the masking slider. So like this maybe. And I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening. And we are pretty much done editing this image. There are a few things I'm going to remove using the spot healing brush in Photoshop. But that's not that interesting for this scene I would guess. So I hope the next time you're working with an image with light rays included. I hope this video will help you with that. Let me know what you think about this technique. If you want to support this channel, leave a comment and maybe like and subscribe as well. Thank you very much for watching and see you all next time.